Hello everybody. Welcome to Baking for Kids with Gail Borden. I am Miss Jen and I want to welcome everybody. Happy spring. Happy Easter. Belated if you celebrate. That was yesterday. Um, and welcome. And I have to say here in Illinois that the weather could not be more cooperative for my topic. Nature's trail snacks. I was hoping when I planned this quite a while ago that since it was April, the weather would be nice. We could all start being outside more. And the weather hasn't been that cooperative lately. We've had some cold weather. We've had a lot of rainy weather. We've had some stormy weather, but this weekend was beautiful. It's beautiful today. And this is the kind of weather where we wanna get outside and play. So what we're gonna do today are make some um, granola bars from scratch granola bars that'll help give you the energy and the fuel. You can take them with you even if you go when you're outside playing or running around or at the park or doing bubbles or chalk or bike riding or hiking, uh, playing sports that will fuel you while you are doing this. So we're gonna get started. Um, and usually I list all the ingredients and I wanna start with one of the main ingredients, which is oats. So I have two and a half cups of, they're called old fashioned oats. Old fashioned oats are different than quick cooking oats and they are different than steel cut. These are like the classic, old fashioned is like classic oatmeal oats. So uh, I have to toast these for about 10 minutes almost. So I'm gonna put them in the oven right away and then we'll talk about the rest of the ingredients and the tools. So I'm gonna put these in the oven at 350, right out of the gate. And actually we're gonna do uh, eight minutes to start. Okay. And my um, regular disclaimer, I do have my sous chef in the house, my dog Sadie. So if we hear any barking, there's a lot of people and a lot of activity right now because of the nice weather. That is my assistant. Okay, so what other ingredients, what other tools do we need? As far as ingredients, you will need the oats. You will need brown sugar. You will need creamy peanut butter or... If you have a nut allergy in your house, sun butter, some kind of peanut butter substitute that you like that has a creamy texture. You will need nuts, which again, if you have the nut allergy, these can stay out, that's optional. You need vanilla extract and honey and salt. They say kosher salt. I don't always have kosher salt in my house, so that's just salt. Uh, mini chips, you could have the big ones, but since we're making granola bars, they might be too chunky for that. And then um, a half a stick of butter. So that is the food ingredients, the oats plus all of those things. As far as tools go, uh, you need a cookie sheet to toast your oats in the oven. You need some kind of um, saucepan for your stove because we're going to be melting a few other ingredients in that. You need a 8x8 or 9x9 cake pan. I covered mine with foil to make uh, cleanup and popping out the granola bars easier. You will need a larger bowl to do the mixing, which we're gonna do in a little bit. And then you'll need like a spatula or a spoon and a couple of measuring cups of the right sizes, which the, um, the recipe was attached to the information link and it's also should be on the live data here at, at um, Facebook and some measuring spoons. So measuring cups and measuring spoons. Uh, I have a spatula, my bowl, my nine by nine. I do foil for easier cleanup, you don't have to, and then my saucepan. And then before I forget, I'm gonna use cooking spray again. You don't have to do that, but, and spray my nine by nine so that everything will pop out easier when it's ready. Because I will say, uh, I've made these before, and they are very peanut buttery and kind of sticky. So if we can do a tool like that, the foil and the oil, spray oil, it'll um, pop out easier as far as cutting them and preparing them once they're ready. Okay, so we've got the oats cooking. So while the oats are cooking, we're gonna take some other ingredients and melt them in the saucepan. But before we do, I wanna show you guys one book really quick. There's two today, but I love both of these books. These are dealing with getting outside, playing, nature. I love the illustrations in both of these books. So this one is called, Wonder Walkers. It was a Caldecott honor book. Caldecott is a really high honor for picture books in the United States. So this is Wonder Walkers by Micah Archer. 
We're just going to read some of it. These illustrations are so beautiful, you guys. Wonder Walkers. So I've got two friends here with their cat and reading. They're not outside right now. So let's see. She says, Wonder Walk? And he says, sure. Ooh, what's a Wonder Walk, you guys? Let's see. Is the sun the world's light bulb? Hmm. Good question. Look at those beautiful sun and sky and blue skies and clouds, just like we've had lately. Do mountains have bones? And are forests the mountain's fur? Ooh, I like how they're trying to take something they already know about, right? Our bones, animal fur, and kind of compare that to nature, thinking about it that way, because it's alive too, right? I wonder. Me too. So here's why it's a wonder walk. We're taking a walk and thinking about different things in nature. Are trees the sky's legs? Oh my gosh, look at these gorgeous trees. I don't really have any quite that big by me, but those are amazing. Do caves have mouths? That's a really interesting question because that's actually a term we use a lot. The mouth of the cave, it means the entrance. Are shells the shore's necklace? Is the ocean the world's bath? I really love these pretty patterns on the shore from the shells. And the tide brings that in and out, right? Is the wind the world breathing? Ooh, I like that. It's like the earth or the world breathing. Ooh, this one's very pretty too. There's the cat again. Is the moon the world's night light? What a bunch of great questions all about nature, right? I wonder. Me too. So I, like I said, I only read a little bit of it, portions of it, but it's called Wonder Walkers and it's really beautiful. And I love how the kids are outside exploring and thinking about what nature means to them. Okay, we're going to dive back in and start um, doing some of our other ingredients. And then there's one other book I'm hoping to show you guys at the end if there's time. Let me just double check that I don't have any friends with questions here. I think we're good. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we need to warm a few ingredients. They're kind of going to be like the glue to hold the oats and some of the other dry ingredients together. So what we need, we need honey, which I have right here, and our butter, which I have. Uh, we need the brown sugar, and I believe the vanilla extract, but that might be coming in a little bit. I know the nuts and the chocolate chips are toward the end. Okay, so we have our oats toasting. They smell really nice too. So if you guys do this at home, you're going to start to smell this kind of almost bread-like, like baking bread smell, and that's the oats toasting. Okay, so while the, oven, or the oats are toasting, we're going to mix the honey, the butter, and the brown sugar in a saucepan. Okay, so I need a third cup brown sugar. So here is my third cup measuring cup. So there's my third cup going into my saucepan. Okay, done with that. And then I also need a quarter cup of honey. So honey's interesting because it's kind of viscous, meaning it's a liquid, but it's a solid. It's kind of this thick material. So we're going to pour a quarter cup in. It's always very sticky. Pours quick. Okay. So I'm going to pour that in. And then I will pull the oats out in a second. 
because it is so sticky, it can be a little tricky to get the honey out. So I'm going to use a knife, a butter knife, to make sure we get as much of this quarter cup because there's quite a bit that sticks to the edges of the measuring cup. There's our honey. Let me pause just to take the oats out of the oven. So I'm going to do one more minute of those. Actually, two more minutes. So that'll be 10 minutes total. They definitely are smelling good, but they're not super, super brown yet, so we're going to leave it. Okay, honey is done. Cap back on that. So we've got our honey and our brown sugar and our butter is going to go. So let me put this butter in. This is a quarter cup, which is half a stick. Okay, I'm gonna grab my knife a little here. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn this on because we need to slowly get those three ingredients to melt together on medium. So I have my burner set to medium, and I'm gonna let those three ingredients kind of melt together, and then I'll whisk them or mix them up to get them nice and smooth. So while the oats are toasting, which they're almost done, um, they smell really good, we've got the honey, butter, and brown sugar in the saucepan. So there was a third cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of honey, and a quarter cup, which is half a stick of butter, in the saucepan starting to warm up and melt together. I have it on medium heat. And I'm going to stir it a little bit in a second once I get my oats out. And it's going to get very liquidy, like a thick liquid. And we'll let that, once it starts and it's all liquid, you turn the heat up just a tiny bit. And we're going to let it kind of come to a low boil. So we'll see bubbles around the edges of the pan for one minute. Then it's done. Then we add a couple more ingredients to that. And then we're going to combine everything to make the basis for the granola bars. I will say, too, um, these are your granola bars if you make this. So if you want to add in fruit like um, raisins or I like craisins they're a little more tart you could do M&Ms if you want tiny M&Ms maybe use your imagination you can do whatever you want as far as mix-ins or toppings um, just kind of follow the basic recipe for the body of the granola bars okay there are our oats and those are ready I'm gonna put these right here And then let me stir. So I have a whisk. This one has silicone on it because this is kind of a nonstick um, saucepan that I have. You don't have to use nonstick. I just happen to have one like this. Mine has thicker sides, this particular pan, which I like because I don't want it to burn. Um, because burnt candy, like if you've ever made candy or caramel, it can burn pretty easily and pretty quickly with sugar and butter. And so I wanted to be very careful with that. But it doesn't matter. As long as you use low to medium heat and you keep an eye on it, it should be fine. We're actually done with the oven. So I'm turning that off. Because why heat up and use the gas more than we have to? Okay. So. This is brown color. I'm going to see if I can bring this over really quick to show you guys. Give me one second. I'm going out of frame for a second. So you can see it's like a caramel color. Okay. Oh, and there's my sous chef. Okay. So we've got that going, and it is all melted. So if you could, we're going to do one minute with bubbles just to let it kind of boil a little bit. So I'm turning it up just a little. And we're going to wait for some little bubbles to form. And we're giving it a minute to kind of thicken. And then that's all set. And we've already got our oats that are toasted. They're lightly brown now and they smell really good. So they're cooked. Um, and so looking ahead, after the liquid is ready, we're going to stir it occasionally. Then it's bubbling. We've got a minute. And then we're going to stir in vanilla, salt, and peanut butter. So I'm going to get those ready. The salt, the peanut butter, and the vanilla are next. And like I said, it doesn't matter what brand of peanut butter. And you can use um, sun butter if you'd like for an alternative. I have several friends 
or families that I know with the nut allergy. So you can use that as an alternative. I do have the little bubbles around the edge. I'm not going to bring that over again, but there are bubbles around the edge of the um, saucepan that's kind of slowly boiling at a low temperature. So there's our minute. So that means I'm going to turn the heat off for that. I'm going to stir it one more time just to make sure it's kind of nice and thick. Okay, so we've got this hot liquid mixture of the butter and the honey and the brown sugar. And now I'm going to add my peanut butter, my vanilla, and my salt. So let me just check. So it's a quarter teaspoon of salt, which is not very much at all. So I'm going to measure that. I'm going to put that in. There's the salt. I'm going to stir that really quick. A lot of times when I add an ingredient, I like to stir to incorporate it until we move on to the next ingredient. There's the salt. And then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I have a large bottle of vanilla extract these days. So I'm going to pour that very carefully. That's one teaspoon. And that's going in my liquid mixture. Okay, so there's our vanilla. And even though I turned it off, this pan retains so much heat that every time I add an ingredient, it uh, bubbles up a little bit. So it's very, very hot. So parents, please be very careful. This is one recipe that definitely wants some grown-up guidance and assistance when you're making it. Okay, now the half a cup of creamy peanut butter. This is the messy part. So we have the half a cup, and there's really no way around. I'm just going to scoop a bunch and fill it until we've got the half cup full in my measuring cup. It's not perfect, it's not pretty, but it is full. So there's my half cup peanut butter, so that's going to go into, and that's why I was going to say, this is quite a peanut buttery flavor uh, recipe for sure. I mean, you get the other flavors too, especially a little bit of chocolate coming through, a little bit of the oats, but it does taste pretty strongly of peanut butter. Okay, so done with those. So I'm going to use my whisk one more time. Kind of whisk this in and get this peanut butter to incorporate into our butter, uh, brown sugar, and honey, right? And then we added salt and we added vanilla, and now we're adding peanut butter. This is funny because I'm trying to, I'm a lefty, so I'm trying to make sure you guys can kind of see what I'm up to, but my instinct is to use my left hand. All right, this is nice and smooth. I'll show you guys. This is just a nice brown. I mean, it's very liquidy. And that's all our different ingredients in there. So we have our toasted oats on the cookie sheet that they've been out. I toasted them for about 10 minutes. And then we have um, our other ingredients, the peanut butter, the salt, the vanilla that I added to the mixture that we started with, with the boiling, which was the honey and the salt and the, the um, brown sugar. Okay, and the butter. So we've got everything kind of separately in the two spots. We always talk about this when we do baking, the dry ingredients and more of the liquid or the wet ingredients. So let's see what's next. So we've got all of that is ready. So then we're going to add the oats and peanuts to a large bowl. So I have a pretty large bowl. 
And I did that because you really want to be able to mix and mix and mix it up because we need to coat all of our dry ingredients, which is basically the oats and the peanuts that I'm going to add in a minute to the bowl. We need to coat that with the sticky, liquidy stuff, the honey and the melted butter and brown sugar, which is kind of caramely, right? And the peanut butter. We need to coat those really well. So I need, let's see, I think it's a half a cup of peanuts. Yep. Okay. I'm going to just kind of estimate a little bit because my half cup is really full. Okay, so there's peanuts. Done with that ingredient. And then it said to add the oats to the bowl. So basically we're going to start with the two dry ingredients at this point, the oats and the peanuts. Okay, so I'm going to carefully, I'm actually going to do this by feeling the foil gently. I'll show you in one second. So all my bowl has right now are some peanuts in it. We're going to throw the oats in there. And I will say the foil makes that very easy to do. I just carry it over and dump it. Okay. So there we have it. So now I'm going to use a spoon, just kind of stir my nuts to incorporate them into the oats. So this has peanuts and toasted oats in here. Okay, smells really good. Then what we're going to do, we have the toasted oats and we have the peanuts. We're going to pour this liquidy, thick mixture into this and start stirring, stirring, stirring. And it says specifically stir it and make sure the oats are all covered and wet, right? You don't want any dry oats because they won't stick. So here we go, and I have a spatula. So I'm gonna pour this liquid mixture. This is very hot, grown up, so you're gonna to have to help. You will do this part. The kids could probably help you stir it if you're comfortable with that, with a lot of supervision. But that is a very hot liquid, so you wanna be very cautious about that. Okay. So now I'm going to start stirring. First, I'm going to just kind of stir it gently around in a circle. And luckily for us, the um, peanut butter mixture is super sticky, right? Honey, peanut butter, these are sticky things. Brown sugar and butter melts it together, which is essentially caramel. So it's not really too tough to get them to stick to the oats. So I'm just kind of stirring. Now I'm going to fold, and that's where you go down on the bottom, kind of flip, and stir like that. Down, rotate, down, rotate. Because I'm trying to get all the oats at the bottom. Because sometimes that's what happens, whether you're making a cake, cookie batter, uh, brownies, right? The stuff at the bottom of the bowl is hardest to reach. So if something's going to be dry, it's going to be that. This is almost ready. This bowl is actually getting warm in my hand even. So again, grown-ups, please be careful. You might want to just set it on the counter and let the kids stir. Someone's holding the bowl. It's not very heavy, but I want to make sure that we've got it all coated. Okay. I'm going to bring this over to show you guys. You can see it on my spatula. It's just very, very thick. It looks like a bunch of oats covered in basically peanut butter. There's more to it than that, but that's the, the gist. Okay, so that's almost all of our ingredients. So now is the time to get out our square baking pan, eight by eight or nine by nine. And we're going to put the oat mixture in the pan. So I'm gonna just dump the whole thing in. Trying to get all these yummy oats. Okay, so my bowl is empty. And basically, this is so sticky that my nonstick, like silicone spatula, has stuff stuck to it. So now I'm going to use the spatula and kind of smooth it all out. 
right? We're gonna kind of make a nice even layer in this pan. Scrape a little bit of this. There we go. Okay, I'll show you in one second. So basically, I'm creating a nice kind of flat pan. So this is my pan of oats, or basically the bars. The only thing missing at this point is the mini chocolate chips, which we'll talk about in a second. So there you have it. Okay. So once that is all done, I'm going to set this aside. We're going to try to see, I don't know if I have, you got to let it cool for 10 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer because I wanted to read parts of another book to you, uh, explain a couple more things, talk about some cool stuff going on at the library. And if we're at around 10 minutes, I'll show you the final step, which is with the chocolate chips. So just to recap, we took our oats and toasted them on a cookie sheet. Old fashioned oats, not steel cut, not instant. And then while that was cooking in my saucepan on the stove top, we started with butter and brown sugar and honey. Got that melted all together and whisked it and made like a brown caramel colored liquid. And then when that was ready, we added uh, salt, a little bit of salt, a quarter teaspoon, uh, a teaspoon of vanilla and a half a cup of creamy peanut butter. Or like I said, you could use sun butter if there's um, nut allergies, tree nut allergies in your family. Then when we added that, the heat was off, but it melted, it's so hot, the texture it got melted to a thick liquid. Then we're combining it all. Actually, I should probably put this on a hot pan. Um, and so it makes us, we fold it and make sure all the oats are coated. And then we get them in the pan, which we have put with foil and cooking spray. I did that to make it easier. I would definitely recommend if you don't do the foil to do some kind of cooking spray because otherwise I'm worried it'll stick in the pan for you when you're done and it's cool and you try to cut the bars and pop them out. So, um, and they're cooling right now. So we will see. Can anyone guess why we don't want to um, add the chocolate chips? Hot surface, chocolate chips, it would melt. So you can do that if you want to kind of just smooth and melt the chocolate over the top. But a lot of times you will just see chocolate chips kind of in bars, right? Like if you buy them at the store. And I love all kind of desserts and snacks. I buy store-bought. I just enjoy baking a lot. And I like to know exactly what's in my food if I can. So this way I know that these have the exact ingredients that I put in. And I can change it and tailor it the way I want as well. Okay, let's look at one more book. And then we'll talk about some cool stuff going on at the library. This is called Would You Come To? by Liz Garten Scanlon. Would you come to another book with some pretty cool illustrations? Would you come to, I love the swirl of water. If we were walls, we'd have windows and we'd throw them open wide. If we were the wind, We'd blow on in and invite everybody outside. And this little boy said, hey, can you come out and play? To his friend. And look, another cat. We got some theme of cats lately. If we were a pond, we'd lap in the breeze. And if we were tadpoles, we'd hatch. If we were a nest, we'd be cozy, woven with feathers and strings. And if we were eggs, we'd be safe there, hidden beneath pleated wings. Have you guys seen any birds? I've seen a lot of birds now. I hear them in the morning when I wake up, I'm seeing a lot of robins. This is the time of year. We had a friend, a little bird friend who kept coming back last year. We named him Robin Fuller, kept coming to see me and my family. If we were birds, we'd eat berries and scatter the seeds, sweet and bright. 
Oh, so here's the, the nest the kids made, and here's the birds. So you guys, how would these birds scatter the berries, do you think? So I can think of two ways. One is they're trying to carry the berries and oops, they drop some. It lands on the ground, right? And with the weather, eventually the berry will kind of decay and the seed will be in the ground or they might poop them out. So they're flying around, they've eaten and that's what happens. And they, it happens and then they have them in the ground. If we were seeds, we'd be hopeful reaching for water and light. Have you guys seen any, any of that too? Because I have, I've seen a lot of plants coming up. If we were a log, we'd be mossy and wide, a crossing for turtle and dog. That's cool. So they made a bridge for the turtle and the dog to get across the river. boundless, wild, and free. Oh my gosh, you guys. So here's the log with our turtle friend. Here's some of the birds we saw earlier, right? Here's another bird. Here's our friends walking with the dog. And look at this, a fox. We are big fans of foxes at the Gail Borden Library. So here they are running, boundless, wild, and free. Three. Would you come too if we asked you? Would you run all the way to the sea? Oh my gosh, they're following this path. Look at that. So here's the houses and they've had this long day outside and here's the sea with the sun setting. That means the night time must be coming. And they would meander until day turned to darkness. Wow, look at these beautiful constellations. This is what they're imagining the stars to be. That looks like maybe an eagle. And bird song carried us home. And she's still dreaming about all the stuff that they did. That was a busy day. I'm telling you, some of the best sleep you ever get is if you've been busy outside playing or doing things outdoors. Okay, let's see. We have about three minutes left. Okay, let's talk about uh, the library. So we're in the month of April. We've got a couple weeks left, a few weeks left of our programming cycle right now with various programs that you're probably used to, like our preschool programs and um, baby programs and Kids Explore and STEAM. But we will be taking a break in a little bit for a few weeks because May and June are coming. We know what that means. It means several things. It means we're winding down. We're in the home stretch for the end of the school year. But with that becomes summer reading, you guys. So if I'm, I believe I'm correct that you can start signing up for summer reading May 15th. So that's just about a, a month away, maybe a slightly longer. I know you guys read, right? Tell me that you read. So if you read, you might as well log your minutes that you're reading and come in, pick more books, come and see me and my friends. And then you can keep track of your minutes. And then when it's time to cash in, you can get some coupons, you can get a free book. Who doesn't love books? So you definitely need to come in and sign up for summer reading. And that'll be going all summer long, in addition to tons of cool programs that we're planning for you guys. I don't even want to say, because I want you to be surprised. But there's going to be a lot of fun stuff all summer long at Gail Borden for our friends that are um, for in kids space, all the way up through middle school. So please come and check that out. Okay, so I hope you try the recipe. Let's see, we've got about two minutes left. So what I'm going to do in a minute is show you how you do the chocolate chips quickly. But then, well, let me grab the finished product with the miracles of pre-cooking and television. Here's my pan of completed bars. And so they look like this, which to me looks basically like 
a regular granola bar. These are a little thicker. They're definitely heavy. You probably wouldn't need the same size as um, if you were, it depends on your appetite and stuff, but you might even want just a half. But, uh, and they do break pretty easily, I will say that, even with refrigerating them, which is the final step, and even with the texture, they're holding together pretty well, but if you're cutting them, they might break a little bit into pieces, and that's okay too. But so this is what you will have at the end. You can break them into whatever size you like. And I hear the timer's almost ready, so I'm just gonna quickly show you what we would do. So we have our pan. Oh, and this is still warm. So I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit to show you in the corner. Because like I said, when this is warm, if we add our chocolate chips, they're gonna melt. And we really, the recipe doesn't really call for melted chips. Again, if you want to, you can. Put the chips on there, let them melt, spread it out evenly. You're gonna refrigerate it. And then it's basically gonna be a granola bar with just a chocolate layer, which you find those at the store too. So it's totally up to you. But this is where the mini chips come in. And again, of course, always before I started today, before um, we went live, I washed my hands. So I'm just gonna, it's about a quarter cup they say, but I just have a little handful and I'm gonna kind of sprinkle them. Oh, and there's my timer. And then if I just sprinkle them, they just sit on the top. So I'm gonna use the bottom of my measuring cup and kind of push them gently into the granola bar. Then they kind of are surrounded by the sticky um, mixture and they'll stay. I'll show you in one second. And that way they're kind of submerged a little bit, almost like a uh, food quicksand, and they won't go anywhere. So here we go. I put them in. I gently patted them down. They're pretty stuck. They're not going to roll around, as you can see. So I'm going to um, do that in a minute, finish it, and then they're going to go in my refrigerator for at least two hours, could be longer. And then the container I have them in is airtight, so when they're done, two hours or more, you can take them out, cut them into whatever size you want, and then they're good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And get outside. Enjoy this weather. The whole week is supposed to be beautiful, and hopefully we'll have more and more days like this. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.